Uh, thank you for coming to this webinar. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Aaron, and I am the sales and channel representative for JetBrains in Southeast Asia. I will be the moderator for today's panel. Just a background, as you all know, uh, more employees are looking to work to remote work or work from home due to the current situation. Uh, this was this work from home is either enforced by the government to, to shut down physical offices or recommend working from home to reduce the likelihood of spreading the infections. I mean, in Southeast Asia, Malaysia itself introduced uh, the Movement Control Order or MCO and Singapore introduced circuit breaker in the last few months. Though the MCO and circuit breaker are over, it is recommended that we continue to work from home. As such, work must go on. And that's the, that's the topic of today's webinar, working from home. Challenges faced by Southeast Asia managers. Our distinguished guest today is Audrey, Audrey Lim, who is the Senior Tech Project Manager at Rapid River in Malaysia. She has been working from home since the con movement control order in Malaysia was announced, and I believe she has lots to share. We also have Elena, who is our Global Marketing Manager for Utrecht at JetBrains, and she is here today to share some insights to show how a team comprising of members from Munich, Amsterdam, St. Petersburg, Czech Republic, and at least four more locations working together during the shutdown in their respective countries. And after the panel discussion, we will have Anastasia. She is our technical support lead for Utrecht at JetBrains, and she will provide a demo for on Utrecht. So let me say hi to Audrey. Hi, Audrey. Uh, thank you again for your time to be a panelist in this webinar. Could you just kindly introduce yourself by sharing with the audience what you do at Rapid River in Malaysia? Audrey? Yeah, sure. Hi, Aaron. Thank you. Actually, thank you all so much for the opportunity to join you, uh, Elena and Anastasia, today. Uh, definitely to talk about something that has had a huge impact on our lives, um, one that we has, you know, we've had to adapt to very quickly, uh, and we continue to adapt to today. So at Rapid River, I primarily work on projects for one of our clients called Avo. Um, Avo is a huge online marketplace for lawyers across America to advertise their services by way of you know, sponsored listing, display advertising, of course, but also um, they participate across many of the different Avo pages. Um, it's also a place for the general public, uh, which we call consumers, to seek out legal information and basic counsel. So um, over at the Avo Rapid River team, we work on projects that seek to introduce new features um, and improve and maintain the user experience for lawyers and consumers. But we also do that for the Avo salespeople so that they can continue bringing in revenue for the company. Uh, on a higher level, I do all the fun stuff that project managers do. So I work with my team to design roadmaps for our projects. Uh, we typically have a few of them running simultaneously. I maintain a lot of cross communication among executives, stakeholders, uh, developers. I use multiple communication channels and also project management tools. I create and maintain project reports, uh, deliver updates to stakeholders. Um, I act as scrum master for the team during our um, sprint ceremonies and I defend the team against scope creep and remove blockers um, so that the team can focus on their sprint commitments. Uh, but because we're a small team, then uh, we generally work together uh, to dabble in a bit of product management as well. So we can um, all together define and prioritize the backlog. Oh, thanks, Audrey. You sound like a very busy person. So mm. uh, next we have Elena. Welcome to this webinar. Uh, Elena, could you just share um, with the audience with an introduction of yourself and what you do at JetBrains? Yeah, uh, thank you, Aaron. Uh, hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, well, at JetBrains, I am responsible for global product marketing strategy for Utrecht. That means I'm working on the product roadmap, pricing policies, all the communication strategies, and so on. But in practice, that means I manage projects every day with an extensive team of more than 100 employees. Uh, and uh, we all used to be based in several offices from the United States to Russia and Japan. Uh, mine was in Moscow. And now each of us is having a home office time. So oh, thanks, Audrey. Um, and last but not least, we have Anastasia. Uh, Anastasia will be demoing your track. 
And during the demo, she will include some tips and tricks on using it. Anything else, yeah, please share something, share, share with the audience more about yourself. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. My name is Anastasia, and a JetBrains, a JetBrains I'm leading Utrax technical support team, and I'm responsible for Utrax customer-facing processes. And our team has been distributed even before the lockdowns, and now we are all working from our homes. So today I will show you how Utrax helps us to stay productive, even um, even not being located in the same office, and how we are able to deliver our product releases in time still. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I've seen Anastasia's uh, demonstration. It can, very, it can be very interesting and exciting. Um, so let's move on to the panel discussion. And I believe that you are uh, eager to hear what these managers have to say about working from home. Um, so let's start with Audrey. Audrey, you're based in Malaysia. And as I mentioned earlier, the Malaysia government introduced the Mo Movement Control Order, or MCO, uh, from 18 March to 9 June this year, um, they requested almost all fiscal officers to, sh to shut down and staff to work from home. But although the MCO has been lifted, I understand you still work from home as a choice. Um, could you go into further details like how this MCO has affected your day-to-day -day work as a project manager? Audrey? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, um... First of all, I think it's important to mention that Rapid River is a remote first base company. So I think, you know, what was incredibly fortunate was that we were already really very well set up for remote working, not just physically, but also in our processes. So we do have an office in Kuala Lumpur, but where people who prefer to go to work can can go and hang out there. But, you know, I, my team and I, we work from home most of the days uh, be before this NCO even started. Um, so on a day-to-day, -to, -day, to be honest, uh, nothing about my work has changed too dramatically. Um, I work on projects for clients that are at least 16 hours behind, well, uh, between 12 and 16 hours behind my time zone. And in addition to that, you know, my team members are scattered all over the world, so from Russia, Ukraine, Egypt. Um, so, you know, the way that we have set up our processes, for how we work and cross-communicate on the whole has not really changed so much. Um, and it's been very lucky uh, for us in that we were able to adapt very quickly and pretty seamlessly in that regard. For me, though, what has, I think, has been the most significant change is the fact that I find myself becoming sort of more mindful about colleagues or team members who may be struggling uh, ment mentally during this time, uh, learning quickly how to adapt and, you know, what I can do to help them cope. Um, I learned that understanding your individual team members is a very important thing to always be mindful about, whether or not you're in the pandemic, but certainly I found myself doing this a lot more lately. So, you know, what they're excellent at, what, what they may find intimidating or difficult, because this could help you as a project manager identify gaps that you should try and find solutions for. Because if the productivity of your team suffers, then so does your project, you know? So. As an example, I had a team member that had to write some tech documents pertaining to some pretty complex work that he had done, um, and that this was being done as part of a, a knowledge transfer. Um, a lot of developers are excellent at problem solving, and it's actually really inspiring to see them work for me. But rarely will you find anybody, much less a, a, a developer who's happy to write documents or creating task tickets, anything like that. So I learned that on top with, with this particular person, on top of the challenges to his personal life due to MCO, um, he had to face, you know, writing this really lengthy document on top of his workload. So that was, you know, putting a lot of stress on him and, you know, signs of burnout was happen happening and appearing. So once I learned this, I made it a point to be proactive letting him know that I was there to help and to begin working with him to come up with a plan where he will provide me with a brain dump of everything that he needs to say. And I do what I do best, which is organize and write, you know. So very soon our collaboration came to an end. Stakeholders were happy. Uh, we were able to deliver um, something of value to our stakeholders, which is always important, regardless of whether you are in a pandemic or not. 
And, you know, I found myself having to do that sort of stuff more on a day to day, where, whether it's collaborating with uh, team members to finish tasks or picking up cues that someone may not be very happy or struggling, uh, checking in on them, uh, working with clients, team leads to, to maybe prioritize a, a more interesting project. So, you know, you, you help keep the team motivated and happy. Uh, for me, anyway, I think on a day to day to answer your question, that would be something that, you know, has become more prominent in the last few months. Well, thank you, Audrey. That's very insightful. Now, let's jump over to almost the other side of the globe and maybe check with Elena on remote working. Um, Elena, could you just share with us uh, what has happened at Jeffrey's office in Moscow and St. Petersburg during the same period? And how do you cope as a project manager yourself? <laughs> yeah. The, I should say we are lucky to be in that part of IT world there, I have to say, almost nothing had changed in terms of ways of working. As you mentioned, at JetBrains, we use a set of tools that allow us to work from practically anywhere. Uh, for project management, we extensively use our own product, Utrek. Uh, teams do project planning there, manage daily tasks, keep knowledge base, and collaborate on issues. Of course, we all miss meeting our customers and colleagues in person. But when we need something to be done, it comes basically to creating an issue in Utrecht, discussion, and tracking progress on agile boards. But something has changed. Uh, and it's the world around us. Uh, I work on a B2B market and still meet our clients our customers online every day. And once in a while, project management tools such as Utrek were mostly used in IT companies. Currently, we already have 31% of our customers among non-IT companies from various industries. And of course, the demand is growing recently. Um, some of our clients are expanding practices of task tracking from IT departments to other teams. Some of them have just started exploring their options on how to organize work. Uh, then they are no longer see each other in the office every day. Uh, and now it's not only IT professionals who drive the digital transformation. Uh, for example, we are now consulting a huge international company from an oil and gas from oil and gas industry uh, on how to start using Utrek in everyday uh, task. And uh, they, they are a company of several thousand employees and the HR department is the main driver of changes there. Uh, some of teams we spoke, uh, uh, we spoke to see the project management tool as a way to beat the overload uh, of the work. For example, we have recently provided Utrecht licenses for a hospital in Thailand whose IT department implemented uh, it actually to get through the COVID times effectively. Okay, thank you, Elena. Yeah, the, the example in Thailand could be interesting. So maybe once I can start traveling, maybe you can share the contact with me and I can take a visit to, to the hospital and maybe get some insights from them. But speaking of which, let's deal with the elephant in the room immediately. You know, there are talk at working from home reduce, reduces productivity. Audrey, um, since you work with so many members across the globe, uh, in different countries. Have you noticed any reduced productivity, uh, not just with your team members, but with yourself, with yourself or with your software developers during this period? And how do you measure productivity for yourself and your team? Um, I think we are all going through something that on a scale for most of us is completely unprecedented, right? Suddenly you're going through, uh, you know, the, the things that I used to, that you are used to particularly things like you know going for lunch or you know taking a break to do some grocery shopping some peaceful grocery shopping or going for a walk or going to the gym all of that suddenly becomes impossible to do you know some because they're completely re restricted but you know otherwise you get slapped with really strict sops that makes life you know much more difficult and as elena said you know the environment has changed so the state of our environment has a huge way of impacting our state of mind and we don't, when we don't have these things that we do out of habit or as part of our coping mechanisms, then, you know, it, it can make life feel very difficult to sustain. So on the one side, you have that, but on the other, you have, say, parents who used to depend on going to the office or their children going to school as a way of getting the headspace that they need to concentrate and be productive. Suddenly that becomes really difficult to manage. And all of this in trying to work from home. So yeah, at the beginning, of course, you see levels of productivity as 
perhaps you're used to or perhaps you're used to measuring not 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 fluctuating a little bit but changing you know i think that's the most important thing to, to take away not that it's low it, it has changed so it is in, you know obviously it's also increasingly being recognized that the mental health of employees is absolutely crucial it's an crucial determinant of their overall health and directly related to their levels of productivity. So I'm a huge believer that happy teams deliver great quality work. And at Rapid River, it is constantly one of our main topics of discussion. How do we build and maintain happy teams? So I think um, that allows us to see productivity as not just how much, how much work you manage to deliver at the end of a sprint, for example, but what is the value that you can give to your clients um, at, at the end of a time box period. So how have I maintained and measured me and my team's productive, productivity over the last few months? First of all, I think it's important to be open and honest about the situation. I encourage openness with your team members. You know, if they don't feel comfortable talking about, say, their mental health or their, um, you, you know, their, their feelings in, in public, then do that. Do it with them in private. You know, make talk about mental health and self care a norm rather than something to be to be hidden or be ashamed of but as a team you know we measure our capacity during sprint planning so we are open and honest um you know as to our capacity during this time we talk about you know if we need a break if we you know if we have say children to homeschool we we consider that in as as part of our capacity then we commit you know, the story points or estimated story points that we can accomplish within the two week period. And, you know, using this discussion during a sprint planning, then I am able to use this to measure how we are doing on a day to day. We have our stand ups and all these things where, you know, I, I, I measure our progress. Um, but I also use this to manage the expectations of our clients over the next couple of weeks. Um, as I said, you know, after planning, we maintain open communication across Slack, um, doing stand-ups, we encourage each other um, so that, you know, by being present, we know quite quickly if something crops up. And so then everybody, um, if someone has like an unforeseen issue or personal matter to deal with, then everyone in the team can jump on board and help out. We have someone called a goalie in each sprint, and this is a person with reduced sprint commit committed work just so that they can focus on emergencies, if there's a fire, if um, a task is in danger of not being completed before the end of the sprint, then that can defer to the goalie and to ensure that they can defend the sprint commitment. So that's a quite a helpful role to have um, and something that, you know, if people don't have that kind of person in there, you can think about maybe having that sort of person. I also maintain a client's project management documentation. So, you know, Obviously, again, we are a remote first team, so all our documentation, are, you know, all our processes are designed to ensure that we can communicate and report even when we're in, in a remote setting. So my project management documentation are all, you know, on, on either published on Confluence or our shared spreadsheets, and I report on our progress at the end of each sprint. So if you do not keep some kind of document to track your productivity or use certain tools, which you know JetBrains, you track have fantastic tools, and we'll see we'll see them in in action in a little bit. But I highly recommend that you do because it gives you a good understanding of what your team is capable of, and it helps you manage the team, the project, as well as client expectations. So my team and I use Jira because that's what the client prefers. Um, and you know we keep things up to date. We use it to to make our commitments quite clear to to our stakeholders. The other thing that I love using um, as a means of of measuring our productivity is is retrospectives. So sprint retrospectives, I'm able to see if the team is satisfied with the sprint um, or if the work you know or or of the work that they're currently doing. And then I use that information to then reflect on what I can do better. Can I speak to the clients in order to prioritize more interesting work during a time when everything else is difficult? You know, um, using your retros, asking the right questions and inspiring, you know, good conversations and will build stronger camar camaraderie between your teams. Um, I use this amazing website called retromat.org to inspire my, my retrospective questions and I'm happy to share that with anyone who's interested. Um, the other thing I can, consider you you do if you haven't done already is to create a remote working agreement with your team 
So a working agreement are a set of around three to five values that your team come up with together in a kind of a, a working session. And because they agree together to stick to these values, then uh, everybody takes responsibility for themselves, their team and their clients. And these values actually become a really great barometer to measure and track your productivity. So there are loads of amazing online sources, obviously, for um, you know, hosting your own team working agreement. I'm happy to share the one that I use for anyone interested as well. Uh, for me personally, I work in a remote first team. <laughs> so, so a lot of the times, you know, I have to measure my own productivity. Um, and I use the tools that are available to me. Uh, Trello, for example, is a fantastic way to break down your tasks into cards and be able to, for me, it's helpful to see what I have to do, to break down my, my work so that I don't feel overwhelmed. Um, I, have a, I have a lot of responsibilities and, you know, I think sometimes if I don't put them down and I can't see them, then I start to go, oh my God, the world is ending. But for me, the advice is find what motivates you, find what works for you. Um, it could be tools that are available free or, you know, are just good and worth the investment or just sticky notes on a whiteboard, whatever works, you know. Thank you for, uh, for, uh, for sharing your experience. Uh, for, the, for the audience out there, if you like to uh, ask questions, uh, you please feel free to put it in the chat and uh, about the tools that Audrey use. And then maybe after this panel, uh, we'll be able to look at it and answer them. Um, I just want to uh, just share with Elena. I mean, for JetBrains, uh, JetBrains has been quite open for its staff to work from home uh, even before this uh, pandemic. But I do know that a lot of the uh, JetBrains uh, people, they like to work in the office. I mean, I've been to JetBrains office uh, in Prague a few times. Uh, it's very comfortable. It's, it's, it's a very uh, nice place to work and you have your colleagues around. So Elena, um, how has JetBrains team taken to work from home in Moscow? And have you personally seen an increase or decrease in productivity among yourself or your team? Um, you know, uh, I actually I'm just plus one to to uh, all the uh, amazing stuff what they shared with us on uh, on how the work could be organized in uh, these days, but. Uh, just to add to that, we recently had our company's internal study on that, and we have one and a half thousand employees at JetBrains, and some of us feel less productive, for example, with having kids uh, at home all the time. Uh, some of us are happier having the spare time, which we had uh, to spend on commuting to work before. Uh, me personally, I got inspiration from having the actual project's results. And uh, our team was able to deliver two product releases working remotely, completely, uh, and um, had launched several quite successful marketing campaigns. Um, even this online event is happening while we're working from home, and that's great. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this, this online, um, I mean, working from home is something that I've been doing uh, since I joined JetBrains uh, two years ago. And uh, we use several tools uh, which JetBrains provide the staff to work from home. Um, and for, for me, productivity is also the thing about the job done. Um, our team manager has leverage to us to, you know, get dressed to us to decide how we do our marketing and sales uh, in, in the Southeast Asia region. And this webinar itself is an example of getting the job done. Um, Elena, um, when I suggested this webinar to the Utrecht team, um, can you just share with the audience how you got the rest of this, how you got the rest of the JetBrains team members to to make to start get the team members started to make this webinar a reality? Uh, maybe you could share some more details like how many teams were involved, etc. Yeah, with pleasure. Uh, actually, I'm I go, uh, I, I going to share the business process details and uh, uh, I believe Anastasia is ready to show the live demo on how we do such things every day in Utrecht. So first we agreed uh, on the main idea and date and started working on our content. I have created a, a timeline with deadlines when we should finish the preparations, start with invitations and have the registration process in place. Uh, so I needed a landing page with content uh, on our side from the web team, materials to be proofread by, proofread by the copywriters, the 
event in the webinar system and the registrations in the market that is set by event team, confirmation mails from email team, promotional banners from the design team, uh, and the social media promotion itself from the digital marketing team. So I created uh, all these tasks, tasks and decided them to the teams responsible uh, so they could plan their time and resources to do that. Uh, I set up a deadlines and dependencies in the issues so everyone involved could see if some tasks are blocking uh, us from proceeding, uh, from proceeding further. And they discussed everything in the comments and tracked the overall picture on the Agile board. And, um, you know, I remember how we all were happy to see the first hundred of participant register, yes, participants. Yes, those were exciting things. Yes, so there are many stakeholders in projects, and for us at JetBrains, most of the stakeholders are internal team members. But for Audrey, you work in a software development house, so a majority of your stakeholders are paying customers. Um, can, you, can you just share some examples on how you manage customers, especially working from home and with these customers based in different countries and time zones? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think and a lot of people have heard this countless of times, but it's very true. I cannot stress the importance of not just high quality communication, but maintaining the same level of communication every single day. You know, I think the key to successful management of a client's, you know, client's expectation or and their happiness while working in a remote setting is consistency. Um, I have weekly check-ins with um, stakeholders and with executives or team leads. Um, and I always make an agenda so that topics for discussions are quite clear. And, you know, discussions can always reorient back to the goal of the meeting because nothing is more frustrating than a time-wasting meeting. Um, but I use communication tools that my clients are familiar with and I use them, I, I make a point to use them really well. Um, I'm communicative on Slack. I document, you know, meeting notes and I put checklists uh, on Confluence because, you know, that's what my clients use as well. And I take the checklists as a team and I get things done. Um, and it, 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 as long as there is like a like a sort of a public board that people can go in that you can then use to to show your progress without having to talk all the time, I think that's a that's a good way to to ensure that you are managing client expectations and and you know clients can actually track your progress and see that things are are moving. Um, our clients again use Jira, so we create Kanban boards uh, and labels to make. Uh, it's easier to have a high level view of the team's progress. Um, they can also look into our backlog to understand uh, what is going on, what's going to be prioritized next. You know, I always link because we use Slack, so I often link and pin these boards to our shared channels so that everyone has very easy access to them. Um, as part of our working agreement, we you know, as far as the remote process, we also ensure that our tickets, the things that we are working on, are always updated on Jira. Um, and it's it's just these things that you do consistently that you know makes customers, especially when they are in a in in a difficult financial or economic situation that like we are in right now. You give them that um, that uh, faith that things are going are uh, still progressing and that you're still delivering value. I think that's very important. Um, if you're in a situation like me and you're 12 or 16 hours ahead of your clients, then you find a way to connect with your stakeholders even when you have clocked off. You know, I do this um, as like a report usually at the end of the day, especially if you're throwing things across um, or a task is time sensitive and a stakeholder may want to know what the progress is when they wake up. Um, think about how to efficiently cross communicate by anticipating the questions that might be asked. So I think a lot of time is sitting down and, you know, reflecting and thinking, okay, what would my stakeholder want, want to know? What, what would make them feel anxious? Be able to anticipate those questions and answer them ahead of time. You know, if you're not sure, talk to your, your team about it, you know, see what information is important to throw across at the end of the day. And if you're throwing a task over the wall, you know, be clear what needs to be done and who needs to do it, because, you know, that stops from any, any like, um, miscommunication things from happening. Right. I think it's also, for me, it's working for, I'm sorry about the building, but work with colleagues who work at later hours. Uh, for me, I think um, there's no reason at all to feel like we're working in isolation here, even though we are, in fact, isolated during the MCO, because as a team, 
you can work together to manage your customers and client expectations. So being able to be there for them or provide quick responses when they expect you to not be there, I think they find that really valuable. So fortunately, I have team members who work crazy hours in different time zones. So I help communicate on their behalf early morning Malaysia time and they help to do that when I'm asleep, you know, so that that sort of full circle is, is very helpful. Um, recently, I also learned that having shared like having shared channels with or emails with key stakeholders is a value important like valuable to keep discussions and conversations dynamic um, and more importantly to be seen so even if you're collaborating directly uh, with one or two stakeholders so you think okay let's take this on a dm to reduce the noise of the shared channel have those conversations in your shared channel because for those not involved um, it helps them be on the same page as you to be, with regard to where the project is at um, and it shows them that stuff is going on and progress is being made, even though, you know, you're just talking to one or two people. Um, I think it's important for me to mention that the tension in America is really high at the moment. You know, people riding on the streets, causing more people to feel the insecurities that we are going through. But, you know, in a more, in comparison, a more peaceful NCO, you know, death rates are really high there. Job security is very fragile. So. This is putting a lot of pressure on our clients to deliver good work. Um, so it's our job really to make sure that we continue communicating really well and delivering you know, the best value that we can. So you know, within the MCO period, we managed to release two, two projects that was very valuable to the sales team. And, um, and, and you know, maintaining the good communication throughout and supporting them throughout, I think that's really the thing that reduces the anxiety, stress, and frustration among your uh, customers nice well audrey i mean just one last question for you i mean looking back at all the past few months um now with your hindsight would you have done anything differently i usually like to say that um there's very little value in speaking in retrospect but i think it's very important that we learn from events and apply those learning points to adapt and evolve and trying to become better every single day i think it's even more vital that we can adapt during these difficult times and this is how we stand out as you know um, employees or a company is that ability to adapt and 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 be mindful and continue to deliver value despite the situation so i think you, you know i think some of the learning points are basically what i've shared today they, they, they haven't really been things that ooh i've came up with you know like because i'm a genius or whatever but it, it came through trial and error like being aware of mental health not allowing my frustration of the state of things to cloud my judgment or making me feel powerless um like um when i had you know having to witness people or, or close people on the client side that i work with lose their jobs or seeing project timelines you know having run the risk of becoming affected i think it's important to keep a cool head and going back to being conscious of your feelings and how you can transform them into a valuable lesson to move forward i think the recent learning point though the one that i said about uh, putting it in the shared channel th that one's particularly special to me because there were some misunderstandings and some level of damage control that we had to do because we decided that we didn't want to spam people we want to put you know our discussions in a in a private channel uh, but in a remote world, silence breeds perceived lack of productivity, which then breeds miscommunication. So for me, keep communications open and always find ways to do it better. Yeah, that's a very, uh, very nice, very good tip to, to share with the audience. Um, just one last question to Elena. Uh, before we end this uh, panel session, um, could you just share some tips on how, you know, improving project management uh, especially for those working from home or working remotely. Lena? Yeah, frankly speaking at first, uh, our team was even ready for some slowdown in our pace and velocity. Uh, and we were surprised to see how successful we are getting at, uh, at getting the job done. Uh, and uh, that actually inspired us even more. I personally believe uh, I can think of three key success factors to it. First one is really a great team culture and management support. Uh, we know that some of 
our customers, for example, have started to use time tracking features in Utrecht extensively uh, to manage the productivity and to track their time. But if you're focused more on helping each other to adjust, managers were saying that it's okay if you feel less productive at home and appreciated any amount of work done through the hard times. And uh, these minor things matter a lot. For example, the company suggested taking anything you need to from your workplace to home, and many of our and many of our colleagues were happy to bring their home chairs, uh, their chairs, their office chairs home, uh, and uh, that actually uh, these minor things we feel every day uh, as as a support and appreciation. Uh, Second thing is actually having the right set of tools in place. Uh, and more importantly, having the tools that follow your process and the tool that adjust if you need some changes quickly, especially if, you're, if your team and your ways of working are going for some changes. Of course, each company has to define their list of requirements and each team, uh, it's up to each team to define what's what's needed uh, to, be, um, to be in place with the right tool. Uh, but recently we have conducted a study on issue tracking tools on the market and um, on how organizations choose them uh, and what's important in them for, for the teams. And it turned out that 66% uh, of UTRAC users would recommend the tool. And uh, actually we were presently surprised to learn that this is the highest score on the market. Uh, among the reasons of choice uh, for this, this score, uh, for you to act with pricing options, and we know price matters, uh, free plan for teams of up to 10 users, feature set, and team choice. So probably for some of us and for some teams and for some clients, the recipe of a right tool includes an agile tool that covers the needs of diverse teams in your, in your company, uh, and especially if this tool comes free or at a, at a reasonable price. And the third thing, actually, uh, that defines success uh, in the teamwork for us is uh, having a clear and shared understanding of, what's, of, what, of what needs to be done at that moment with this team, with this requester, with this assignee, and so on. And an opportunity to easily collaborate if something needs to be clarified in the process. For example, many teams at JetBrains have the templates for typical issues uh, submitted to them in Utrecht. So if, so if you are collaborating with the team for the first time, you, uh, you, you know what to do and it's easy to submit a task in clear and understandable way uh, and uh, leave the comments area to discuss the details. And that helps us a lot, uh, a part of all the other communication channels we, we, we try to maintain uh, in a while. And uh, probably Anastasia will show you how it works in Utrecht for us. Okay, thank you. So Audrey, um, any last any last words or any um, last advice you'd like to give to the audience? Sure, yeah. The first, I would say, uh, never make assumptions. <laughs> Again, something that I learned, um, you know, for within this many years of um, working on projects. Um, you know, is the belief that 55%, I think, of our communications body language, 38% is the tone of voice that we use, 7% is actual words spoken. So, in other words, 93% of a communication is nonverbal. And obviously, this is an overly simplified statement of the complexities of human communication and offers the nuances that shift and alter these percentages. But the fact does remain that words are only a minuscule part of our communication. And when you are remote working and you're on, on say, Hangouts or GoTo, and you know you only have your words, you don't have the um, benefit of being in an office space or or, or being able to. To, to get the little nuances that um, uh, sort of drive your discussion or drive a quality discussion. So, um, you know, it is, it is important to put yourself in the position of your stakeholder before you communicate and ask yourself whether what you're saying has value or can be understood. Uh, as I said before, if you're unsure, talk to a colleague about what you're about to say or write, see if they understand the message you're trying to convey. In a virtual meeting, encourage turning on videos. I know a lot of us get out of bed and have very bad hair and stuff, but it really helps um, to, to be able to see people because that gives you the cues to keep the discussions going quite smoothly. Um, always be communicating and documenting. I always say that. Other, or remember ABCD. 
you know, we're patent pending that, by the way. <laughs> when you work remotely, it is harder to ensure that everybody's on the same page. Um, I like mm -hmm. writing media summaries, um, publishing them on Confluence, um, just so that everyone remembers important points. Um, again, as I said, I, I have checklists or to-dos um, after the meeting with names of those who agreed to do them attached, so that we all know what needs to be done and who is responsible for those um, items. Um, so there's never any miscommunication, or at least it's reduced significantly. So as a team, one of our working agreement is that we always keep JIRA tickets up to date with progress. Um, this is another good way to make sure that we're always encouraging progress. Um, always take care of your team. As I said, um, they are deciding factor um, and their happiness will make or break your project and you know your, your project timelines or productivity. Um, honestly, try some of the remote first things I've suggested today, see if that can help you bring you closer. And obviously there are tools that we're going to be looking at that, that might help. And I, th I guess finally, take care of yourself, talk to people, talk to your senior members and find out how you can do remote better it sometimes it just takes some creative thinking, um, but usually it's just using the tools that are already there. All right. So with this again, uh, uh, we have to end the panel discussion. So a big thank you to Audrey for taking the time off from your busy busy schedule, and of course not forgetting Elena too. Thank you. Um, I don't see much questions online, so uh, I'll just hand over now the presentation screen to Anastasia, uh, where she will provide a demonstration of your track on how to improve the project sorry how to improve project management productivity in this tool uh, while working from home so Anna Kesia, over to you thank you okay so do you see my screen yes uh, yes yes you see yeah. your screen cool. yeah I, I wanted to mention that we will definitely answer all questions in the end uh, in the upcoming blog post and we will cover cover some of them in the end of the webinar so yeah thank you Aaron I will show a demo of you track you track is a project management tool um, and I will share some um, some insights and our experience on how it helps us to stay productive even when staying at home without any personal meetings and how we handle our product releases and how we are able to be on track um, and to maintain the shared understanding of what is going on in our products across multiple teams in the current situation. Okay, so uh, in Utrecht we use issues. An issue is basically a piece of information that can represent um, a global initiative or just a minor task. And issues belongs to projects. A project is basically a container uh, with some common properties like fields or integrations or settings. And each issue inherits the project settings. So now let's imagine I'm a member of a marketing department team and our task would be to prepare a remote webinar about project management. Uh, of course, uh, we, we cannot do it ourselves because we need input from multiple teams. Uh, for example, we need the design team to prepare banners for the webinar and we need the event management team to, to hold the event itself. Um, so, so the real challenge would be to, to, communicate, um, to communicate between multiple teams and to deliver the result in time. On the screen, you can see the page uh, of our project, of our marketing department. Here is our team and here are some of our tasks. And I, as a member of this team, will also have my personal tasks and I will guide you through the whole life cycle of one of my issues. Before starting the preparation, we have conducted a call to discuss the main steps in our webinar preparation. For example, we discussed the dates, the speakers, and um, some uh, other information. And based on that, well, actually, we, we of course, we stored the results of our discussion and we stored it in our knowledge base. Uh, a knowledge base in Utrecht is basically a set of articles uh, where article can be just a plain text or some um, embedded media or a table or a list, whatever you need to create your perfect document. Uh, so yeah, here you can see that we store our internal documentation in our knowledge base and we have a dedicated section for webinars and yeah, we have stored the results of our discussions here. 
Besides internal documentation, you can store your FAQs or external documentation or product roadmaps to allow your customers um, get their answers in just one click. Okay, so based, uh, based on our discussion, we have created a set of issues. Uh, and let's, um, let's proceed to one of my tasks that I need to implement during the preparation. Here you can see an issue creation page. And uh, as you can see, my issues already belongs to the marketing project. And my task would be to create a post about the webinar. Um, that kind of announcement. Yeah, and uh, let's say I shouldn't forget to provide agenda there. On the right side bar, you can see a set of fields. Each team decides uh, which set of fields they need themselves. And we as a, as a marketing team decided that this is exactly the set of fields that we need. For example, we require the due date to be set because it is important to understand the deadlines and the schedule. So let's say I need the task to be completed by July 20th. And these four fields are kind of standard that almost everyone everyone used because it's kind of basic properties of your issue to understand who is responsible for it, what is its current status, and what, what type is it, and is it critical or not. And we have some dependent fields. For example, if I was about to create an event task, I would need to know its location. So you see, if my issue type is event, I see the location field to, uh, to fill in. But that's not an event, that's just a task. So, okay, so the, the information is filled in. Now I can insert some images if I need to, I don't know, to express my thoughts better or to, to use some pictures in my uh, announcement in my post. And of course, my task is not just a standalone task. Um, it's a part of a global initiative of preparing the webinar. So to show it explicitly, I'm linking my issue to the main prepara webinar preparation task as a subtask. So now, now everyone can see that uh, this webinar has a subtask. Uh, now it's time to create the issue. Yeah, and after creating an issue, you may want to see what else is going on in your pro project or in some neighborhood projects. So here you can see the issue list page, which contains all issues that we have in our U-Track. And um, you can uh, control the level of the digitalization. For example, I want to see the most detailed view or I want to see the most simplified view. And as you can see, there is a tree structure displayed, um, and this also can be regulated if you don't need it. But we find this tree, the tree structure the most the more, more convenient because it shows you the, 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 the relationships between issues, and you can see the main issue, its subtasks, and, and their subtasks, so it, it's good to um, to stay up to date, to see what's going on. Yeah, the second thing is that it's not very convenient to see these tons of tickets on the page. So let's use the smart search to, to narrow the results down. To, so, so it would display only projects that I need. So it would be, as I said, it would be event marketing, event management team, marketing department, and the design department. So now you can see only issues relevant to what I'm doing. And I may want to see only issues assigned to me. Yeah, you see, so now I have a relevant set of issues. And to avoid composing this query each time from scratch, I can just save the search and give it some name. And I can show it, share it with my teammates or I can subscribe to it and I will receive notifications about selected updates. Yeah, that's very convenient to, to be on the same page with your teammates because you know when you when you when you can see only screens, not 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 a person, it's very convenient to see the same to to avoid some mis misunderstandings. Yeah, okay. So 
let's remove the query and uh, here you can see my new newly created issue um, in in the, in the whole webinar initiative. Now let's navigate to let's proceed to impl implementing the task. Uh, I'm going to create the announcement post in our knowledge base. You see we have a dedicated event section here. Yeah, and we have some previous event announcement. So let's create an article. There will be a, a, yeah, a project management webinar. And I have some prepared text. So now I'll show you how to make, to make it more attractive. For example, I can use lists to attract the reader's attention to some important information. And yeah, I didn't forget to specify the, the agenda. And I'm going to insert a video to make my article more colorful. Yeah, um, now it looks pretty good uh, and it's ready to be published, but uh, the announcement should go leave should go live on a, on a specific date. So I will not publish it um, like globally for now and I will close its visibility for our team only to, to review the article and to publish it um, on, on, on a specific date. So yeah, let's save it. Uh, yeah, and now, and in my article, I'm explicitly asking my readers to ask their questions so they can just ask their question in comments. Um, yeah, like, like, like this. And I can mention my teammate and they will receive a notification and will be encouraged to join the discussion or to ask their questions. And it is very easy to, to not to lose the article update because you can just start and then start it. Yeah, yet another case uh, that uh, if you have some plan, for example, if we have some webinar agenda and then we change it and if I want to see what was in the beginning of this plan, I can just browse through the, uh, through the previous version of my articles and I can restore to any of the available versions. So nothing will be missed or lose and everything is, um, is displayed here in your knowledge base, in your track, tracker. Um, yeah, to just, just to be on the same page. Okay, and then the last but not the least feature of the knowledge base is a full text search because, uh, of course, it's 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 very convenient to be able to find your answers in just one click. So let's let's see what we have about gatherings in our knowledge base. And here you can see all the re relevant results. You can navigate to the to the articles to the article you need and see it yourself. Okay, so now uh, now when my issue is finished, let let uh, everyone in my team know about it. And now we are navigating to the uh, to my favorite um, to my favorite view of issues. That's agile board. Agile board is basically a table where you define what will represent the columns and rows. And the trick is that it can be it can be really anything. So as you can see, uh, I have statuses in columns and my initiative, global initiatives as roles. So that, that is very effective to have your issues divided logically. So here I have everything related to the webinar preparation um, issue. So nothing is lost. And as you can see, issues from different projects are collected here in one place. So uh, despite the fact that, all, that we have multiple teams and they are distributed across the world and everyone has different time zones, we don't, we don't need to conduct any personal meetings or, uh, or give some you know, peer to peer discussion orders or discussions because everything is collected here on the board and anyone can just open the board and see what is going on and uh, what what is the status of any task and if anything has been overdue or anything is uh, need to be taken care of immediately and that's that's actually very convenient to to not to miss anything 
because this is the thing that helps you to maintain this shared understanding because everyone is on the same page always. Yeah, so you can see my task here on the board and I'm moving it to the in progress state. Uh, so now everyone is aware of it being under the, the implementation. Yeah, so the the article has has been uh, created and now I'd like my teammates to review it. So I'm inviting I'm I'm inviting him. Could you please um, review my article? Yeah, um, and um, my teammate will receive a notification about it. So now let's pretend I'm jo I'm Tom. Okay, I'm Tom. And um, I have just received a notification with a request to review an article. So I am rev reviewing the article and let's pretend I did it. And of course, it's, it's, it's really cool. So I'm going to tell that, yeah, it's a cool article. Well done. And send, uh, send the update to Anastasia. OK, so now I'm, I'm back as Anastasia. OK, let's. Let's see, let's see the comments. Yeah, I can just put a reaction to uh, to express my emotions because yeah, I'm really happy the article is approved and now we can uh, move forward with our tasks. But before that, I would like to log the time that I spent while doing the task. So here I can specify the date, the duration and the type of my work. And now everyone opening this issue can see what has been done here, how much time did it take, and what was this type of work. So again, shared understanding of everything, what is going on in the product. Okay, log in my time. Uh, I will show you later how we can collect the statistics overall, over all issues and to see the workload of, of, of the team and the time statistics, etc. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so now it's time to finish the task. I'm moving moving into the done uh, column. Uh, okay, it's finished now, uh, and um, I would I would like to show you one more um, example of using the board, because we are working with deadlines, and it's very important to stay on schedule to to. To, to stay on track. And uh, it is possible to use due dates as rows in your board. So as you can see, these areas are divided by time periods. And you can see uh, in these time periods rows, you can see issues that has to be completed by that time. So for example, uh, yesterday this task should be finished, but apparently it was not. So maybe I should contact the assignee like, hi, John, do you need any help? Yeah, you see, so so everything is very transparent. And John may reach me out and say that, for example, some unexpected uh, circumstances appear or you need more time, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I can see upcoming task. And this is very convenient to distribute the workload correctly. So you don't have like all uh, all your tasks to be done tomorrow. You have them distributed in time. And you can see I use priorities here as columns. So on the right side, I have the most urgent tasks. Of course, you can share the board with your teammates. And one more interesting, um, interesting example of using the board is personal board. So you can create this kind of board for you only with your tasks and use it to, to self-control, to self-management, um, to just to make sure you're not missing anyone, anything. Okay, now let's see how, um, how our report helps us to stay on track because it's very convenient, because it's very important to, to hold the webinar in a specified on a specified date, of course, because we don't need it like two weeks after. And if we have a specified date, we need to to do our best to to make it this day this date. 
and our Gantt chart helps us in planning activities. Uh, that means that when we create our issues and set their possible start dates, their dependencies, their estimations, the Gantt chart is able to predict the end date of our preparations. So it considers the dependencies between issues. For example, it makes absolutely no sense to prepare banners before we have the webinar date confirmed because we need to specify the date on the banners and um, the Gantt chart considers the possible start dates of your issues for example it makes absolutely no sense to conduct a rehearsal like in in the beginning of the preparation because it should be conducted two three days before the event and it is possible to see the workload here so as you can see we are on track we should be uh, we should be all set by the august the third and we have some free space here in case anything goes wrong but if you open the Gantt chart and see that you are not on schedule anymore you as a as a project management manager you can decide to to do something with it for example you can discope some parts of the preparation for example for example something is not that important or you can involve uh, several more people to, to be able to do the tasks simultaneously and to, to be to be on track or or some some other uh, some other practices that that are used in your company uh, okay so now let's move to another report yeah uh, one one important one more important thing is that of course you can you can include different issues and projects in your reports. So as you can see, I have included everything related to the webinar preparation um, issue. And you may include different projects, different teams, different initiatives, whatever is relevant to you. Yeah, and now let's move to the um, time report. As you remember, I have logged time when doing my task. Uh, and each of my teammates did the same. So now we have a statistics on how on how much time our task took. Um, and you can see different presentation of the report. For example, here you can see uh, per issue presentation. So how much time each issue took. And you can see it per each piece of work. For example, here you can see that sending emails took quite a lot. And maybe we should wonder why. Uh, it can be used per user uh, and per project. So basically anything to, to give you this overview of, of how much time is spent to which tasks. Um, yeah, and it can also can be used as a health check for your team because you know, um, if you see that someone is really overloaded and spends too much time doing uh, their tasks so maybe you should reach them out and ask if everything is good if they need any help yeah um and yeah the same thing you can include different projects as you see everything relevant to the webinar is included in the report and uh, you can have additional fields so it's basically a table with all crucial information that can be exported to Excel or CSV to be used further. And the last but not the least report that I'll show is, is the workload um, per assignee. That means that you see how much issues each of the assignee has at the moment. And you see that I'm totally the champion here, so maybe maybe I need some help because I have like 10 tasks, that's, that's, that's very, very, very much to do. And we have some issues that are, that are not being taken care of by anyone. So maybe it makes sense to, to, come, to come there to these issues and to, to assign them to someone or to see if that's okay that they are unassigned. So yeah, reports are a good way to monitor what is going on in your project. Uh, yeah, and uh, and now we are moving to the to the dashboard page, and the dashboard page it's like a huge giant health monitoring panel for your project because you have everything, all metrics collected here, and as a project manager you should be um, 
you should find it very useful to have uh, you know all 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 important metrics and triggers collected in one place so basically it's set set of widgets where a widget is is just a, a piece of some uh, metrics, uh, some information, and you define what it is. So it can be a report or an issue list or some activity stuff. For example, here you see all our urgent tasks. And here you see all issues that are that are overdue, so they, they were not completed in time. And here you see the activity in our team. And here you see this uh, time statistics. And here you see the calendar with upcoming tasks. So everything that you find useful for your team uh, is collected here, and you are able to track if anyone, if if everyone in your team is up to date, if they know what to do, if they have some um, some problems, like if they cannot uh, manage their task, or if they have too many tasks and they need help, or if um, I don't know if somebody has finished their tasks and now is able to uh, to help their teammates. So everything is here, and of course you can add add, add widgets to the to the to the board uh, to the dashboard. Uh, just just give it a title. Um, yeah, and it will it will appear here. Yeah. So so basically. Basically, that's it. I guess I showed the all all the key features of Utrack, and we really believe that um, these metrics, these boards, and these views uh, help help us to 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 maintain this 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 understanding of what is going going on and have the same shared vision of our product. And yeah, we managed we managed to um to deliver to deliver uh two product releases as Yelena already said uh in time completely remotely using this view so all metrics all um all metrics and all our issues are here and even being in different offices in our at our homes in different time zones we are still able to deliver these products and to to work as a team together so thank you. That's that's it from my side. And yeah, we are ready to to answer questions. Um, and Daisy, I think there's one question for you. Uh, it's asked any plans for comments by text in article. Could you please repeat the question? Any plans for comments by text in article? Comment by text? Yeah, comments. Uh, comment. C O M M E N T S. Yeah, actually, we have comments. Comments. Um, actually, we are now in the process of developing our our knowledge base articles, so we are collecting the the feedback. And um, if we find out that comments are are very, there is a high demand to to use comments in articles. I think we can consider it, but we don't have any any nearest plan to do it. But okay. yeah, if 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 it it will be demandable, why not? All right, thanks. Um, maybe this uh, question for Audrey and Elena, and maybe I could answer at the end too. Um, the question is, how do you deal with the lack of informal communication from work from home? For example, like coffee with colleagues, lunch, water cooler talks, etc. Uh, maybe we let Audrey go first. I miss that so much. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss going for lunch with my colleagues. Actually, that's like one of the only reasons why, well, not one of the only reasons why, but you know, it's it's quite a huge reason as to why I go to the office because um, I, I just like to, to catch up with all of them. But yeah, it has been hard um, to, to, you know, have that sort of water cooler conversations or coffee break conversations that, you know, we used to get. Um, but the thing that um, my colleagues um, who work in HR, have been very, very good at doing, and they're, they're called Sarah and Kavita. What they've been really good at doing is is having a game session or a trivia session um, every, I think every, every Friday it, it has been. And for 20 minutes, you know, we all join in and play some games together. Uh, there's one called Scribble, which I highly recommend. It's really fun. It's like a, 
What game is that? Uh, not charades. What is it? Is it charades? Like no, Pictionary. Pictionary. Pictionary, yeah, 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 scribbles, yeah, that's really fun. Um, and uh, Sarah will also uh, do like quiz sessions for us. That's really awesome. Uh, one of our uh, devs, uh, Jimmy, he created Discord channel for all of us at the start of MCO. That was really fun because with this, I think Discord is usually um, something that's mainly used by gamers to like chat with each other as they're playing games. Um, but with Discord, we can have our own individual desks or we can make virtual desks for ourselves and people can come on board. And the moment they get into your desk space, they can start talking to you um, and you can show whether you want to be made available or not. But I found that was really fun. Um, we, you know, just, uh, for me, I think just be creative, you know, have like I know our our clients, they have um, happy hour on Friday. So they have set a time for one hour. Um, I think between 4 to 5 p.m., where everyone can come on, hang out with each other, have a drink and talk. Um, I personally have missed going to the gym, and I have a couple of colleagues that love to work out with me. So I, I hold like a workout session every 6.30 onwards. Um, three times a week <laughs> so that this person and I can hang out, you know, chat and, and work out. So, yeah, I think, I think there, you know, we do miss informal communication. We do miss that, that, that bonding session, but that's not impossible to do remotely either. It just, it just takes a little bit of, you know, creative thinking. And Irina, how about you? How, how about your team? Yeah, share it in a, in a, in a chat window with, that we, with our team uh, has a, uh, 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 has done uh, pretty much the same as other team done uh, did. Uh, we um, uh, put a blocker on our on our calendar for every day, like mad tea party. So we called it uh, somewhere at the end of the day, uh, and uh, it started with uh, sharing our uh, home environments, uh, looking at pets, uh, at kids uh, of each other, and uh, me personally, I was joining their. Uh, for like every day for the uh, for the first month because I was I was getting closer and closer to uh, to the colleagues uh, even closer than before the uh, lockdown times uh, especially to the colleagues from from other offices and um, and now these parties are grown up to the uh, Friday meetings for drinks uh, with more people coming and uh, joining for a long time. And uh, and and of course we uh, we do we do try to continue. Uh, I mean, as a team, we do try to continue our our uh, uh, business as usual in terms of uh, uh, life out of the office. So we do yoga yoga classes uh, together. We do English or some foreign languages classes together, and try to to uh, connect anytime we can. And Anastasia, you like to share anything? Like yeah, to, uh, plus one to Lena. Yeah, I think that that's in our company. That's JetBrains. This um, this team spirit is supported quite well, and we have these town hall meetings. It's kind of meeting for all the company where our CEO is sharing what is going on. That everything is cool actually, and and that. Um, um everything is under control and we can share our questions and they will be covered so basically anything that that okay. we're interested in and that's very cool you know this this um uh this atmosphere of of of, of trust and 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 being transparent because uh, if you if you have questions yeah just 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 ask them and you and you will will be answered yeah okay. and 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 in our team yeah also as a, a, a second that that this matchy party is is a really uh cool way of of uh, um of getting your teammates getting closer to your teammates like you know like not not teammates but like friends maybe and i know that in several companies there are some uh like games when you are randomly randomly um, matched to a to a random person from your team and you uh, are, su are supposed to have a tea party one-to-one -one. and that is a great chance to know 
to know someone you you maybe didn't uh, speak to in the office even because it's like random match and it's a good chance to know your colleagues better and maybe to find some real friends that you even didn't suspect. Okay, so uh, for me, uh, for me, I actually have uh, two catch up sessions, one with my own channel's team. Uh, we do it uh, once a week and the other team is actually with the Asian team. Uh, all the Asian team members in China, in Hong Kong, uh, Australia, uh, we also have one from US. Um, during that, we just talk about anything, you know, just to share what's happening in the country, um, stuff like that. So yeah, we do have still have informal discussions all around the team. Uh, I think that's one last question. Uh, one last question uh, just came out recently uh, in, the, in the question box. Um, have you all noticed any regional difference in team behavior since the lockdown started? Or is it still like the same? Um, Elena, you like to go first? Do you, is it still the same or do you, do you see any difference? Uh, actually, I'm thinking of, of, of the good answer to it because um, at first I, I, I would say I would say no. Uh, it, it again, it was uh, to me uh, and in our team, it was an opportunity to uh, uh, to um, well, uh, for example, uh, I, I, was, I will I will start with example. At those med tea parties, we used to we used to share the ways of uh, uh, life, not only work but life is going on in uh, in uh, in all the countries because. Uh, because we have we have a part of the team uh, in in Europe, part in part in Russia. Some of us are uh, some of us in 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 US or in other countries, uh, and uh, and we were sharing the uh, even even our uh, some of our frustrations. We were sharing uh, the ways of how the uh, countries that, uh, and and governments are dealing with the with the times and how the the businesses the customers, the companies around us are dealing with this. And uh, actually, uh, again, to me and to us, it was a, a, a good uh, uh, um, good chance to get into the atmosphere of uh, a, any region and uh, good feelings uh, uh, on, on what's going on in our, in, in the world. So uh, I wouldn't say that, uh, I would say that we are uh, pretty much uh, um, covering all the uh, regional differences and time zones and 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 uh, and uh, a lot of ways of working uh, with our tools because they are pretty much flexible. So the main differences were the reactions and the sharing of feelings and uh, keeping the team spirit up during the times. Uh, Anastasia, how about you? You do you, you notice any difference in team behavior since the lockdown started? Actually, I, I, I cannot tell about the regional differences, but uh, I see the differences depending on the uh, personal status of, of, of a teammate, because those who have kids, they, they need to, to take care of their kids being at home and, and yeah, and their, their kids under the lockdown, they also um, experience some difficulties because without being able to to just go for a walk so yeah i believe that 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 were quite tough times for them and of course we did our best to support them and yeah as we already said it was like do 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 what what you can and and that's and that's cool um yeah and uh, also, I, yeah, I, I don't think I, I, I noticed any, any, any regional difference, but, but I agree with, with what Lena said. Okay. And Audrey, how about you? I, I feel like I don't have really that much to add on top of the same way, because, you know, this, we're all going through the same things, right? Like wh whether it's to talk about this pandemic, you know, whether it's not being able to see family, going out peacefully or you know, some some of us harder than others because you know I have a colleague, for example, whose wife is a nurse, and I have a, you know many colleagues who's um, uh, who have children who have to now homeschool their children, as Anastasia has said. So you you know re regionally um, 
we all went through our NCO and stuff in different times. So we could like learn from each other or um, some of us, are, you know, we, we learn from the ones who's gone through it first, you know, like for example, Russia, I think was a little bit later than Malaysia. Um, but, you know, we, we it, in many ways, I think productivity wise, like I said, we are struggling in our, our new normal, right? We're trying to adapt to a new normal. And so the idea of what product productivity is has not diminished, it has just changed. And I think we have to adapt to the change just as how we adapt to what we consider valuable, what we consider working hard, you know. Um, we, we are all like in this challenging time together. So regionally, I don't think that's changed because the situation is all the same equally across the board. Yeah, actually speaking about speaking about differences, I, I I'd like to say that I noticed not a difference but but a common thing because we all have like the same problem and now it's it's you can you can just feel that we are all together despite being yeah. in different countries in different time zones. We are all like like a one big team going through some tough times and we have just just one um yeah well, one problem and one 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 dream to to <laughs> to, to to be happy again <laughs> to, quite nice because you just yeah. you just do the situation around you know yeah, yeah so I, so I, so it's, yeah it's like about being to for me it's like being together with like with the whole world and it's really cool yeah i, I agree with you because uh, right now i think the asia team is also very close uh we got a uh, catch up we have fortnightly um because we all don't have office, so we communicate mostly through email or Slack. But now with this catch up, we actually have to put a video on and you know see put a name to a face. We can put a name to a face. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there was one time where our Taiwanese colleague was uh, walking around uh, in Taiwan because they don't have much infection, and then we were all here uh, at home, so we were mm -hmm. all like you know uh, expressing our jealousy for for him. So yeah, I mean. It has changed, but I agree with everyone is that you know we, we have we are adapting to this new normal. Uh, we, we might even be closer, um, uh, given that we have to use the you know, video conferencing most of the time. All right, so uh, with that, um, thank you all for your time. Thank you, Audrey, uh, especially from your busy schedule. Thank you, Elena and Anastasia for uh, organizing uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, with that, we end our webinar. Uh, once the video is ready, we will share out the link through email. So thank you and take care. Goodbye.